Hello, everybody. There we go. You can see me. Uh, welcome to Spirit Coaching Astrology. I am your Western astrologer, Priscilla, and this is a reading for Cancer Rising, Sun, and or Moon, um, specifically for Cancer Rising, as I do these readings based off the whole house system, based off your rising sign. So, um, if uh, this resonates, please uh, like, subscribe, follow, comment, share, whatever. Um, and if it doesn't, please, uh, you know, take what does, leave what doesn't, and go ahead and look for your other readings, your sun and your moon placements on this channel. Um, if you would like to uh, book a more personalized reading with me, you may do so at my website at spiritcoachingastrology.com. Um, and the link will be in the description box below. Um, please do have your time of birth and um when you do book those readings with me and um i can make them more personal uh personified or you know personalized to what it is that you are seeking to um you know get information on or find out okay well, with that being said let's begin okay so cancer rising um you know, first of all, you know, welcome to the new year. Happy new year. And we had a, let's start with the, the, the new moon that occurred on the 2nd of January. This actually happened in your seventh house in Capricorn. Um, so cancer rising, um, sun and moon, there could have been some real, uh, new feelings or uh, things that were like new around contracts, um, uh, partnerships, relationships, and these are one-on-one -on -one relationships. So like with you and a boss or you and a close friend or you and a, you know, a spouse, or, you know, husband or wife, um, or, uh, you know, really again, close friends, you and a really close friend, um, friends is usually the 11th house. So like, you know, uh, the collective community, but the seventh is more so like best friends. Okay. So one-on-one -on -one connections, partnerships, contracts it could even be business contracts, um, or people in your, you know, in your career and your work area of life, um, or contracts of any kind to be frank. Uh, so one-on-one -on -one contracts, you know, uh, but anyway, so the new moon happened in your, in, in your seventh house, which, where it was um, highlighting the sun and Venus and Pluto. So, and Venus was retrograde. So, or is still retrograde. It does not go direct until January 29th. Um, so this will highlight again, relationships for you because uh, Venus does rule over love relationships um, and really close connections. Um, and so for you, there could be a lot centered around, um, you know, partnerships. You could have possibly even met someone new because the funny thing about Venus retrograde is that it could bring new to you especially with the new moon there so you know on january 2nd or the new year or even the end of december you could have possibly met someone um you know that you felt more spiritually connected with especially because jupiter had entered your ninth house um on, at the end of december i believe the 29th of december to be exact um and these are more, more so soulful connections and jupiter really wherever it it, it it goes to and whatever house it falls into, um, it or transits into, it will expand anything it touches. Um, and it could also bring a lot of blessings and abundance in those areas of life for you. So cancer, you could be having a very big spiritual moment where you are starting to, um, you know, change, uh, and renew, um, or even possibly expand the way that you look, um, at the, the spiritual things in life on, you know, the more hidden and profound things. Okay. Um, this is also a very, very watery, um, time for you, a very emotional time for you. Um, because, uh, you know, the connections that you have, these close partnerships and contracts could be ultimately changing or transforming. Um, and some of this could be a little bit uncomfortable cancer because you like to, you're the type of energy that likes to play it safe, um, before you do, um, take any risks. So this, this energy can be quite volatile for you and your partnerships and, um, really just confusing things for you or almost feeling like things are coming to an end or things are uh, coming into an end on a, on a more, um, contractual, uh, level, um, dealing with, um, you know, uh, love matters, uh, you know, things of money, uh, matters of material could be all up for grabs at the moment. Um, and, and, or you could just be, um, you know, feeling like it's time for something new um, in your partnerships and your relationships. Um, and this could even be because Venus rules Libra and it rules Taurus. It could be even that you met someone in, 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 in the friend group, uh, you know, uh, energy or, in, you know, in your, in your, in your friend groups or, you know, through friends, you could have met someone because it rules your 11th house. Um, and Libra actually rules your fourth house. And this person can almost feel like home to you. Um, and, and, or it could have been some disruptions in your home and, um, and with friends, you know, and you're just trying to figure out how to hash these things out and fix these things. And it could have been some something, something with joint, um, you know, with money, with joint resources, um, 
with friends as you know mercury is going retrograde now in your eighth house of, of resources um and saturn sitting there kind of limiting these things for you um it could be you going back and revising some contracts that you could have made with somebody with joint resources that is a friend um that potentially could be affecting your home life um or someone that you might live with as a friend you know possibly roommates where it's just not um working out or you know a roommate could be bringing in some friends that are just you're just like i don't want these people in my house um, so there could be some disruptions around this area for you um or could it just be with your partnerships to be frank because again seventh house rules partnerships so it could be anybody with marriage or you know maybe you're you're not, you're uh, dealing with a spouse and you just don't like their friend <laughs> or they might have made a new friend that um could possibly just kind of um bring some transformations for you know you as well as your partner um but the, you know, the real focus here is in your friendships because uh, Uranus is um, in retrograde in your 11th house in Taurus in, in, in your house of friendships. And, you know, Taurus is all about stability. It's all about structure. It's all about how you, um, you know, love your friends as well, because Venus is love and, and, and Taurus sits there. Um, and it's, it's about the material as well. You know, the material things and the physical connections with your friends um, and with your Uranus in retrograde for uh, about a year or two now. Now, it has been probably been disrupting this area of life for you where making things really, really unpredictable with your friends um, and, um, you know, not so solid with the foundations with your friend. And you're like, what is this going to give? You know, so it, Uranus will be moving on the 18th direct for everybody. This is like a really massive change um, and it could bring a little bit more of innovation now and progression. Uh, it's very quick moving. So now you can see some things kind of working themselves out now in the area of friends um, and the collective community and, and more stabilized energy here now, uh, or even being able to build with friends now and, and really put your, um, you know, your goals and your aspirations and your dreams, or even your desires um, that you have um, maybe manifested or gone into contracts with, with your friends, this, this would be a good time to now be able to work through implementing and putting plans together to push into gear now and put these things in motion, especially when Mercury goes direct um, in the first week of February. Um, February will be a better month for you guys to really start um, putting these things into action. Um, Mars is sitting in your sixth house uh, in Sag. So this is again, working with coworkers. This is again, your health. This is the area of servicing others. Um, your pets are here too. So there could have had some disruptions in those areas for you, even on a conscious level, because, uh, you know, it rules the left brain. So on a more logical level, on a more, you know, day-to-day uh, -day level and routines and stuff. So Mars now, when Mars moves into Capricorn in your seventh house, you're, you can now uh, put action into these contracts that you've been trying to connect with, with coworkers or your friends or um, really um, just manifesting things um, more so for you in that area. Um, there could have been some disruption in your health with Mars here in your sixth house, Cancer, rising, sun and moon. Um, you could have uh, potentially seen, I think, I believe Mars was in Sagittarius since uh, November. I, I would have to go back and look, but I think I'm right. Um, but nonetheless, it's been in there for a while. So there could have been a lot of disruptions in your health here for the last uh, two months. Um, you know, some really uh, quick things and, and things of, of that you, uh, have, have, didn't even think that would pop up. So Mars here was trying to awaken you to recognize that it's time to really take your health serious and put more action towards, uh, you know, getting some type of routine for your health and really merging your health regimen into your daily schedule and your daily routines um, and really connecting with, um, you know, others um, on, on how you can um, look at the bigger picture and, and, and find a, a, a more stabilized path to being able to uh, work better with your health um, or in the, you know, in the health field, if that's what you are involved with uh, cancer rising. Um, there's also probably been some, um, you know, Mark, Mars can rule anger and with it sitting in your house of, the, of your mental components, your mental faculties, there could have been some really conscious uh, things and in in themes in your life lately that have triggered your, um, you know, anger, uh, especially in communication, because Mercury has been sitting in your eighth house of communication. So things of like deep psychological um, uh, interest, um, things of that nature could have really been um, 
came to your, your forefront in a big way because Sagittarius is grandiose energy. Um, and now, uh, you know, Jupiter has entered into your ninth house. So you're really starting to dig deep on your spirituality and really trying to assess what exactly you have to fundamentally take more serious in your life. Um, so when Mars goes into cap, um, and it's going to, you know, it's going to be riding with Venus for a while now. And when it does, it's going to be about what you, um, what you want to put into action as far as love, what, um, what, what you feel harmonizes your relationships, what you feel is important into your connections with others um, and, you know, your love life and what you actually value because Venus is about values as well. Um, and so, you know, the home is going to pop up here for you because you have the home life and family um, and, and, and traditions are really, uh, you know, it's a fourth house theme for you with Libra there. And these things are going to be really um and they're not already being touched on, uh, touched on, you know, these values for you, especially with your partnerships, you know, what you value in others and yourself um, and what really comes to the, the table for you and how, how this affects your home life or how this affects your friends. Okay. Or your friendships, you know, your connections are going to be really prevalent here too. Um, especially because Gemini is going to, um, well, we have the North node in Gemini at the moment in your 12th house. So there's been a lot of, of, of undoing and facing hidden things, hidden fears, uh, looking at some things that you were, might've been blindsided with with for the last, um, you know, the, the last, uh, what, three, four years that the nodes have been in Sagittarius and Gemini. Um, so now when they, these, the, the nodes move into Taurus and Scorpio for you and your 11th and fifth house, um, there's going to be a lot of, um, working towards um, connecting again with the collective community. Um, and also for you, Cancer is really starting to come with the current energy and where we are on a collective level, because I feel like Cancer, you've been really, since the pandemic, you've been really just kind of like um, trying to stay behind the scenes and, and, and really stay where it's like safe and uh, not risky because of all this, these changes, even though you're a mutable sign and you're well at, uh, uh, sorry, you're a cardinal sign. Um, and so, you know, you, you like to be very, with your decisions, you'd like to make them to be very, very, very uh, concrete um, and reflective on, on harmonizing for everyone because that's what cardinal energy is. It's about balance for everybody um, and yourself. But, um, you know, with this, it's like, it's going to allow you to um, now move with the collective community um, and really put an emphasis on who are your friends um, and how do they serve a purpose in your life? How do they stabilize your life? How do they bring harmony um, and value into your, you know, your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations? So cancer, there's going to be a lot of themes towards your hopes, dreams, and aspirations, because this is the domain of the 11th house, the collective, the, the community, the friends, um, you know, what you aim for in life and what you uh, dream for, what you wish for. Um, that This can uh, also, for a lot of you cancers, rising sun and moon, this could bring a new relationship into your life. If you haven't already met someone towards the end of December, uh, or even November, uh, I want to say December, because that's when Venus decided to go retrograde. Um, you might've met someone through friends that, uh, ultimately you might want to start to move ahead with, uh, and really settle down more. So now, um, or find time to have more leisure, um, and friend time, you know, and, 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 and getting to know this person and developing a good friendship with this person, even if it's not on a love level, more so on a friendship level, but how do they bring value into your life? Okay. Um, cancer rising, you have Chiron, um, the wounded warrior, which is your childhood wound asteroid at eight degrees in your 10th house, um, you know, Aries is, uh, the type of energy that goes ahead and goes forth with, uh, risk and does not care about what others thinks and is very action-based. It wants to go ahead with, um, action so that it can develop its goals and, um, you know, set, uh, set forth a path for itself. Um, but you, for, for, for you, the last, um, you know, year you've had Chiron sit here in Aries in your 10th house or even longer, I believe. Um, I'm not sure how long Air Chiron has been in Aries, but it's been there for a while. And so, you know, career have, has might've been, has been a little bit rocky for you. It could have been um, a lot of phobias and fears around it. It could feel like, um, you know, you, you just don't really, uh, uh, maybe quite impulsive in some areas and maybe not even, um, knowing exactly what direction of in life you should be going towards. Um, I feel like a lot of us astrologically feel like, like, like that all 12 signs, um, because we are in uncertain times, you know, Uranus is in Taurus, Taurus rules the physical earth and Uranus is disruption. It's a uh, chaos that, you know, Uranus spins on its axis. So it can just be kind of rebellious and moving things in its own way and unpredictability, you know, and things like here and there, especially with finances, right? Cause Taurus rules finances, it rules money. And, and on a, on a collective level, we see how money is kind of up and down the stock market. And we see, um, you know, you know, cryptocurrency becoming a big thing. And then it's kind of going back and not, and then it is. And then, you know, cash money is like, 
we, we had that little scare back in 2020 where cash was like not going to be allowed and in, in places. And some people really even implemented like don't bring cash, use card, whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, there's been a lot of like changes in this area for you and cancer. I feel like you've been relying a lot on friends for, um, you know, uh, stability <laughs> in this really unseen times. Um, and really cancer, it's time to, um, you know, work towards, um, stabilizing more of your resources, um, with friends, um, and, uh, you know, really just understanding that you have a, uh, internet ability to sense the undercurrents in everyone. Okay. You are a cancer. Um, you are a water sign water sign really goes, um, you know, all water signs are very feely. So we can all like vibrate on, you know, I'm a water sign myself. I'm a Scorpio sun. So we all can feel, uh, you know, the undercurrents in, in the, in, in the, in the room or with the people that we are dealing with, even if they are close by or far away. Um, so, this, 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 um, energy coming in for you, especially with, um, this, you know, this full moon in your, um, first house is going to really develop, um, a lot of watery emotions for you, cancer rising sun and moon, um, but specifically around, um, how you see yourself and how, um, you show up in the world for others, uh, and how you ultimately, uh, nurture yourself, because I feel like you've also been running away from really taking, um, initiative towards your health, um, or you, there's been, you know, you've been feeling a lot of action towards having to really take more charge of your health. If you had a scare in the last month or two with your health. Um, so, you know, the, the, the heavens, the gods, whatever it is that, you know, the earth the universe, whatever is the spiritual, uh, spirituality, whatever it is that you connect with is trying to urge you to really take a better look at your health, um, to really establish what is fundamentally important for you on a contractual level with, with close partnerships, um, and business matters, um, as well as clearing the air with, um, you know, maybe some things with tax taxes, um, because you do have uh, mercury and retrograde in your eighth house. This does rule taxes. It does rule like, you know, shared resources. It does rule like money. It rules, um, you know, debt. You, there's a lot of, of energy here with having to um, communicate or, or at least go back and look at these contracts in order to when mercury goes direct and, and february again in, in aquarius it's going to dip into caps so it's going to go back and look at these contracts that you had made with uh old partnerships okay because this is this is dealing with old partnerships okay venus is a retrograde in your seventh um with with um you know the, the opposite sex uh specifically making contracts with females um and Pluto is about transformation and change. It's also about the hidden. It's also about, um, you know, karmic lessons here because Cap and Pluto both deal with karmic lessons. Um, so when February, in February, when Mercury goes direct, you might be faced with some, you know, some, you know, Saturn is authority. It's in your eighth house. You're going to be faced with some more higher up like energies, like authority, like governments or, you know, businesses or something where you guys made contracts together. And now you're both going to have to like hash these things out and come together to work through them in order to fix, um, the energy that's been uh, kind of hidden away from you and, and the stagnation of kind of allowing you to move ahead or really what you've been running from cancer. I'm going to be frank. Um, there's been some trying to uh, restrict or limit how much you are involved in these contracts. But the reality is that you are involved in these contracts with whatever type of contracts you made, whether it's marriage contracts, you know, getting into a house together with someone in a while ago, or, you know, think back to 2014 when you had these, um, you know, these themes happening with contracts, this is now all going to be revised now in 2022. Um, but this has to happen in order for you to move ahead. Um, this, the Saturn and uh, Uranus are in a, a, a tight square right now in your 11th and 8th house. So again, um, you know, uh, friends, uh, dreams, hopes, and aspirations, as well as the deep psychological things um, and shared resources with other people, uh, even like, uh, and things have hidden um, with friends can come out right now. So, um, you know, just keep an eye out, look for anything that might uh, fundamentally make sense when it comes to these predictions, especially dealing with Saturn, you know, Saturn is very much wisdom. It's also about growing up and maturing so that you can like get out of the cycles that you're stuck in. Cause eighth house can be just like things that no longer are serving us that we keep integrated into our personality that are ultimately, you know, 
pushing us in these cycles and these patterns and, and circles that they're not serving us. So uh, cancer rising, you're dealing with a lot of letting go of these patterns that are ultimately hindering you that you might be blindsided from that are now going to come into the light when, when Taurus, the nodes move into Taurus and Scorpio. Um, so I hope this resonates with you, cancer rising. Um, you should, um, you know, if, if it doesn't just go ahead and go look at your, you know, your sun and your moon um, signs as well, as those might resonate a little bit more for you and just take what, what resonates, leave the rest. Um, if you, again, if you do want to book a personal reading with me, you can do so um, at the, in the link below at my website, which is spiritcoachingastrology.com. And uh, those readings are more personalized to your time of birth. Uh, I do use tropical placida system when I do those, not the whole house system. So they're a little bit more, um, a, a, accurate and acute to your personality and your personal energy that you were born with. Um, and I do do all types of, of reading. So you can, you know, request that, uh, in your, um, when you book with me, what type of reading you're looking for, what type of information you're trying to look for. Um, so again, uh, thank you for, um, you know, the subscribe, please like subscribe, comment, and share so that other cancers, uh, rising sun and moons can go ahead and see this video and, um, please, um, like, um, or please hit the bell so that you can get um, notifications when I post these new readings, Cancer. Um, and I will see you in February 2022. Thank you.